was August. I was on Bracky's game jam thing on itch.io. I was like, hey yo, they had a they had an actually good theme, which was um, uh, alone or something. I actually, it was uh, you are not alone. And so I was like, immediately I'm like, okay, bro. I just I saw this Ange the Great video where he's uh, making this 5 5 p.m. game. And I'm like, I'm I'ma just fucking rip that shit off. <laughs> Uh, but I had I had some different ideas because I wanted to add like an uh, elevator to the game. Or I went I went in his Discord actually. I was like, dude, you guys should add elevators. And I also saw this video on procedural dungeons from Vazgriz. So I started like trying to figure that out. And one of the first things he does in that video is use a Delaney tetrahedralization. And I was like, I don't know how that works, brother. And uh, instead I went with just like. Came up with a different way to do it. It's a little simpler. We're basically, uh, all right, so look at this, bro. If you have the one, now you have them all connected so you know it's fully traversable. And then if you wanna add loops, then you just, from there, make some random. So I switched to 2D, just 2D only. I started work on the enemy and modeled them in Blender. And I had kind of a weird idea in, head, in, in, in my mind, bro. But I really just said in head. Um, so I was like, he's a sculpture. Ripping off ripping off SCP. <laughs> but hey man, alright. Had the had the enemy follow the player around just with the just uh, directly chasing after the player. So no pathfinding yet. But that's the next thing I started looking at implementing. Uh, and I did a uh, an A star demonstration in JavaScript, although I, at this stage it was it had like severe bugs. Um, like I, I hadn't quite figured it out yet. Like it, it it looks like it'll work here, but it it uh, it doesn't work for all inputs. Eventually, uh, I, I figured it out for the the, the the implementation in the game is like rock solid. But uh, I got Python scripts to export custom mesh formats, and my custom or my Bryant mesh format basically. And the Bryant mesh format can each mesh can have uh, up to 255 box colliders associated with it, and those um, uh, it, it grabs from the children of the mesh in Blender. So I'm making all these boxes um, children of the elevator mesh, and then my game code can then just collide the player with the elevator by going th by iterating through its box colliders and doing a 2D box collision with each one so it's it's ignoring the third axis It's ignoring the y y axis it's just doing x z all right this is this is me me uh, messing with pathfinding to get it to work and singing juice world and i'm like yeah go uh, go listen to juice world um so fake go listen to juice world so fake dude So eventually, I get I get it kind of. Eventually, I got it working. This is still broken. <laughs> at some point, at some point, I I got pathfinding fully, fully, fully working, with no issues. But it's not here. <laughs> that was getting close though. Here I'm making a key card. Like I still I would recommend like okay I figured out the trick because I'm also working on a on a block game, by the way. But I figured out the trick of how Notch made textures for Minecraft, and it's to make a simple base layer. You make like, you draw the texture with a few colors, just a few colors. Um, and then you apply noise to the whole texture with Paint.net. Paint.net has a really good noise tool. You, you apply um, non-colored noise. Uh, and you can change the strength of it, and that's straight up. That is exactly how the the Minecraft textures were made. And now what I'm always we're gonna make a that I'll little flashlight. Except that I okay, the starting with a cylinder. Deserve. In other words, that well, it's just a normal little flashlight. You can use this off the deep end in your garage. Kind of use this. The word that I would use over and over again. Crime. That it is this to 
find people in the dark. You can use this to uh, illuminate your face. Alright, so get the flashlight in game. I'm walking around, opening locks everywhere. I'm opening locks, okay? Opening locks. Using the keys, using the key cards. Okay. I'm zipping around. stuff up. Now now one thing that's interesting about this the early flashlight shaders is like up close it's like blows blows everything out really. So next I wanted some uh, numbers in the elevator. Blender has numbers. Takes a little while. Yeah. Yep. Okay, good night. Love you too. Oh yeah, I was like, oh yeah, I'll paint them. But then I was like, hang on. I have this no texture texture <laughs> that's also green. <laughs> to get this shit to work, like to, to for me to render this video, and not I might like Caden live crash because I'm doing this Caden live. I'm having to like speed the video up separately <laughs> and render it. Ah. Uh. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm gonna tell you a story. Last night, I went downstairs because I was hungry. And I've been eating, like, toast every day for the past few days. So, like, I'll have four pieces of toast with Cholula on them. Um, but last night, there was no bread left. There were these two pieces of toast that I had burnt and put in a plastic bag, thinking, like, maybe I'll eat them, but I didn't want those. Um, and they're still sitting down there. I don't think I'm going to eat them. I went in the closet and I found a can of Bush's baked beans. So I put that in a bowl and I ate that. Um, but I wasn't satisfied with that. The can was pretty small. My dad had a steak for me in the refrigerator. And I started frying that shit. I literally, I put it in this like nasty ass cast iron that I had fried um, like six chicken breasts in three days prior and never cleaned out. So it just had poultry goo at the bottom. Because they were like, uh, in addition to, you know, poultry just kind of doing that, uh, they were um, marinated chicken breasts. So it was nasty. It was like tar. So as soon as I put the steak in there, I'm like, or as soon as I flip it, I realize it's just covered in tar. And I kept cooking it, and I fucking decided I wanted a potato, too. And I got a really nice potato out of this bag, rinsed it off, and started slicing it thin and putting it in the fucking skillet next to the steak. And I put the lid on there to kind of steam everything. And eventually the steak was cooked, and I took it out and put it on a plate. And it was just sopping with, with goo brown brown very dark brown kind of um you know super greasy almost kind of golden you know what i mean i took some bites of it and i was like it wasn't like the worst thing ever but i could tell like okay this has like this has some old crap on it like man like and it, it was nasty enough that i just threw the rest in the trash can i only like had one bite really that i swallowed spit the rest out um and of course my potatoes are just ruined. They're like just as cake. They're even more caked and all that brown shit because they're porous. And uh, I just left them in the skillet. And I went upstairs with a with a granola bar I found. And I started eating the granola bar at my desk. And it was, uh, I could tell it was just out of date. So yeah. <laughs> um, 
This is weird. I feel like I already included the flashlight. <laughs> Yo, why are we watching the flashlight shit again, bro? Uh, I'm gonna have to switch my clips up. Now for that UI, I, need a, I needed a font. So I printed out this terrible grid. Like I tried printing out a grid that I made in paint.net and it came out like this, but it, it actually doesn't matter. So just know, like you don't, you don't actually need a good grid. Um, shit though, I didn't show the trick. I might show the trick. So you open it in paint.net, you open your image, your picture, right? I took this with an iPhone. You gotta have good lighting. So I have good lighting. First step, you go to uh, like color, tone, and turn the saturation to zero so that you just have gray grays. And then you go, uh, it's called Manuela on pasta. I think it's called like manual settings or something in English. But, oh, you turn the, you move the thing in the middle on the right column all the way down to the bottom. And then you fiddle with the, the middle slider on the left column to kind of tune it. And if you have different, if part, different parts of the image are like differently dark, for instance, this corner, the right, the bottom right corner is much darker than the rest of the image. It was in shadow. You have to do those separately. Then you can invert the colors and there we go. So yeah, I'm building up the ASCII table. So then from there, once I had the font in game, I started working on these title screen buttons. Now, uh, settings does not do anything, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it was planned. It was planned. I don't know, I just couldn't think of any settings that really needed to be in there. You know what I mean? Or that's just a, uh, my excuse. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of like little polish things, honestly, that I need to do on the game, but... Uh, uh, then I replaced the enemy model. I called it a talker in the game. I replaced it with this model my sister made for me, which is like much scarier than my original one. And putting it all together, here's the final result. You can download this on itch.io. And uh, with that, I'll just uh, leave you with the clip.
Oh. Hand der Kreuz bei mir.